Welcome, 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 LinkedIn. If you're watching this on the replay, hit that replay hashtag. If you're live with us today, I can't thank you more for being with us. Stay tuned. We have a great show for you. Steve Spiro, you're a mentor, you're a consultant, you're a business owner, but most importantly, you're a host of your own show and you're also a master connector. Steve Spiro is one of my idols and I love listening to everything that he does. He's such a dynamic individual. Some of the topics I really enjoy speaking on is how to really connect, you know, whether it be in person or through social media. I love to lead with my weaknesses. I lead with, you know, my vulnerabilities. It's fine because I'm okay with who I am. Number two is how to go from being inward focused, self-focused into others focused. Being willing to give and, and go out there and, and, and look to serve, that will attract the right things. Another one is on leveraging LinkedIn to really grow your business. You can reach a lot more people. You can broadcast a message to people that actually consented to want to know you. And then lastly, overcoming big obstacles. I love sharing. I was a shy, jabbered kid, picked on, bullied, learning disabled, dyslexic, really in a dark place. I was really in a box in the shell. And I've been able to break out of that box. And, and so I love being able to inspire people and really help them. So the Master Connector was born. The world is my networking event. Right? I meet people all the time. My goal is to meet three strangers every single day. Steve is open to meeting you. You should set up a face-to-face -face with Steve. One little conversation can really change your life. So questions we're going to throw at you today. What is the vision for your life, your big goal? Have you ever been blindsided by challenges? When tough times come, do you run or fight? How do you play defense? How do you stay prepared? So get ready to answer those questions. Steve's going to queue up or uh, tee off of our topic here. Steve, let's go. Absolutely. Well, appreciate everybody. Hopefully you're right in the comments right now. Uh, networking with each other, connecting with each other. We want to hear where you're from, what, what city, what town, what area, what country. Uh, we love our community. We appreciate it. And, and Cameron, thank you for, for doing all the magic and being the, the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. Always appreciate you, sir. But hey, so question here. Have you ever been dealt a crappy deck of cards, a hand? You know, it's it's uh, it's not so great, right? I mean, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I've had those situations in life. You know, I'm like, again, short guy, shy and introverted, right? We all have our set of circumstances. But here's the point. Do you make, and this is a little cliche, I know, but do you make lemons, le lemonade out of lemons, right? Uh Another, another question I, I would ask you is, are you a victim or a victor, right? Do you take those circumstances and just be the victim, play the victim? Or are you a victor? Do you, do you, are you an overcomer, right? Uh, are you excuse maker or excuse remover? Do you, do, you, do you literally look at these circumstances and say, okay, I've heard it said that out of every adversity comes a seed of equal or greater benefit, right? So what are you doing? And, and it's not, again, it's not what happens to you because we all know things are happening to us all the time, but it's not what happens to you. It's how you react to it. Uh, you must, what I've learned is you must have a strong why and a clear vision. Otherwise those obstacles will consume you. And so it reminds me of a quote that I heard uh, from Helen Keller. And she said, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight, but no vision. So you have to have vision. And so this young man that Cameron is going to introduce is, is an amazing young man. Can't wait to have him share with you guys. I've heard a little bit of his story. You're going to hear more about him. So if you're ready for Cameron to introduce our special guest, I want you to go ahead in the comments right now and type the word ready, hashtag ready, R-E-A-D-Y. And uh, we'll, we'll have Cameron bring him up. But it's going to be an incredible strap on, put your helmets on. It's going to be a great show. Cameron, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Here we go. Here we go. All right, Aaron, on the screen. I'm going to get everybody up on here so we get visually. I'm going to let Steve take over the controls here. Aaron Galoob. Aaron became the first legally blind athlete to play football in a Division I game when he was at Tulane University. He was captain in his senior year and went on to also become an NFL free agent. Aaron never let his limited vision get in the way of his success. Aaron's grit determination and effort enabled him to earn a spot on the Tulane team and the respect of his teammates, coaches, 
and fans. Aaron began playing football in seventh grade and worked extremely hard to get where he is today. His goal is to show others that it doesn't matter what they're fighting or what their perceived limitations are. Anything is achievable with hard work and tuning out the judgment of others. His planning, passion, and perseverance enables him to be successful. Aaron has paved the way for others with disabilities and shown that the impossible is possible. Please welcome to the show the amazing Aaron Galou. Yes. Thanks so much for having me. Looking forward to uh, chatting with both of you today. Great stuff. Absolutely. That's phenomenal. Good stuff. Well, Aaron, yeah, very impressive, uh, obviously, bio. And Karen does a great job making all of us look amazing. So uh, that, that, that bio is pretty incredible. But so, you know, we want to hear a little bit of your story. So, so if you're ready, my, my, our amazing community, we want you to type in the word hashtag story if you're ready for Aaron to give us his backstory. So we want to hear about your backstory and how someone who, as you said, legally blind became a D1 football player. So if you can, and again, uh, I know we have an amazing community. I know you're in the comments right now typing in the word story, hashtag story. So uh, yeah, ahead, uh, you can, Aaron. Sure. So I was born legally blind, no vision in my right eye, very limited in my left. You know, played every sport under the sun growing up, tried to figure out what was the best fit for me and found football. Always loved watching it. Started playing in, you know, seventh grade. And at the time, I was an offense and defensive lineman, and, and the goal was, you know, just hit the person in front of you. I knew that I couldn't be a quarterback or a wide receiver, and that was fine. You know, for the first few years, I didn't really play much, wasn't the most athletic, and that was, that was okay. It was about learning to be a part of the team, doing it whatever I could to help out my teammates. And eventually, I kind of got tired of that in the sense of I wanted to be on the field. I wanted to be contributing. I wanted to be adding value in different ways. And so – my sophomore year, I found long snapping, and I realized if I got good enough at this unique niche position, I might have an opportunity to play at the level I wanted to play at. And so from then on out, it was get up at 5 a.m. every single day, go practice long snapping, go to school, go to practice with the team, lift weights every single evening after practice for the next several years to do what I could do to get to where I wanted to go. Uh, went to several camps, ended up getting nationally ranked pretty highly as a long snapper. And then it was, how do I get the attention of these college coaches? And so I cold emailed and cold called every single college coach in the country, showed up on several campuses and just trying to meet with coaches and did whatever I could to get myself in front of them. And eventually got that offer from Tulane uh, to go play. And in my sophomore year, I played for the first time, becoming the first legally blind Division one athlete to play in a game. Was named a team captain in my senior year and went on to become an NFL free agent before going into the world of entrepreneurship and speaking. That's pretty awesome. That's amazing. And, you know, I think there's a, there's some key points there. It it sounds like from what you said that you you worked your buns off, right? You didn't just, you know, do what everyone was doing. You did a lot more than everyone, right? You uh, you kind of kicked it into high gear, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, in, in all areas of life, whether it be athletics, whether it be business, whatever it may be, it's, you know, how do you work hard and smart? And it's it's the yeah. combination of those two. Because a lot of people out there work hard or a lot of people out there work smart, but they don't do the both of them every single day. And sure. when you can find a way to, you know, do those two things and, and figure out exactly what you want, how you can get there, and you do them every single day and you're disciplined about it, then you'll know, get to where you want to go. Absolutely. Yeah, I remember, um, you know, my martial arts experience, you know, my, you know, I was not very talented, you know, short guy. Uh, God started later in life. Some of the guys I competed with. They were they got started in their early teens and I was I got started in the martial arts at 20 and um, not really blessed with anything, you know, super talented as far as that is concerned. But I made a commitment. I was going to outwork everybody. I practiced more than everyone else. I, um, I I studied more than everyone else. I never missed a class. I literally never missed a class. There was times where I I went to I went to class. I was I had a cold. This is before. I think we're, when we now know health wise, probably not the smartest thing, but when I had a cold, I went to class anyway. I, I, I said, all right, I'll just, I'll just show up this way. At least I showed up. And, you know, I've heard it also said that, you know, half, you know, like 90% of it is just showing up, right. Of success. So I just showed up. And then when I got to class, I'm like, all right, well, I'll just put my uniform on my gi. It's called. Right. And then, and then eventually I'm like, all right, as I, I said, all right, I'll just, I'll just do the warm up part of the class, you know, and then, by the time I, the time the class was over, I'd done the whole, whole entire class. But I never missed a class. I worked harder than everyone else, and I wound up passing everybody because it just 
like you said, it's it's really it's hard work, but it's smart hard work. I love what you said there because you can just work hard, but if you're not working smart and hard, I agree with you wholeheartedly, for sure. Yeah, I'll, and I'm just gonna throw it in there too. That showing up thing, getting up in the morning, you're like, you, there, there's a thousand excuses that can be made, but just getting out, getting into the gym, suddenly you find yourself in motion, right? It's it's a big, big, big deal. Absolutely. And I wanted to shout out while I while I got the mic here. Uh, shout out Tatiana Espinoza for tuning in and uh, participating in the comments. Thank you very much, Tatiana. Yolanda, she's always one of our loyal community members here. Yolanda, shout out to you. Thank you. And also uh, Gregory uh, Austin in the house. So glad to have you all with us. If you're in there, if you're watching, make sure you're commenting. We want to hear from you. Appreciate you. Go ahead, Aaron. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if uh, if you're queued up for a question, so I'll I'll, uh, I'll queue up the next question here, sir. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's awesome, and and um, you know what the next the next question we're going to have is going to talk about vision. So we want to we want you if you if our community, our amazing community, is ready, type in hashtag vision because we want to understand from Aaron, right? What is your vision, and how have you been able to stay to remain so focused? How, how have you done that? I know it's it's got to be something deeper than just work ethic and just whatever. So tell us a little bit about your vision on that, sir. Yeah, you know, I think there's two forms of motivation, internal and external. And, and most people focus on external forms of motivation. You know, I want to do this because someone says I can't or I want to do this because someone thinks I should or, or I want to do this because I'm looking up to this, you know, person that I idolize that, that does it. And then they focus on those or, you know, I want to do something because I'm mad that I can't or, or whatever it may be. And there are times and places for those, you know, if I go to the gym and I want to squat 500 pounds, I'm going to think of something that pisses me off for the next 30 seconds so I can do it. And that's great. But outside of those types of instances, external motivation has no form of long-term success. And so in order to create long-term success and, and long-term growth, it's finding that internal motivation. So everything I did, in athletics and everything I do today in business relationships, mindset, everything that I have going on, it's, you know, I want to do this because I want to prove myself right. I want to do this because I enjoy doing it. I want to do this to prove it to myself. If you focus on doing something for external motivation, if you focus on doing something because of other people's thoughts, feelings, or opinions, then it's only going to take you so far. You're going to do it for a day or a week or a month, but eventually you're going to lose gas and lose steam. If you focus on doing the things that you want to do because you want to do it, if you're going to focus on the things that are important to you. If you're focused on the things that you want to prove yourself right because you set out to do it for a certain reason, that's going to take you a month, a year, a decade, and the rest of your life, and you're going to continue to have motivation for it. I love that. Yeah, I mean, I we talked about on the show before how uh, I I created a life mission statement for myself. It's essentially the same. It's a vision, and whether you know that that, that vision, that life mission statement, is something that it's going to take. I'll be doing it until until they put me under, you know, six feet under. You know, it's just something I'm going to continue to do, and it motivates me. It drives me. It gives me the the ability, the gas in the tank, to when the when the you know the dry you know, dry times happen, when the you know when the you know the, the the motivation may not be there on the outside set. There's something inside that keeps me going and keeps me driven. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you know, when you when you accomplish, right? I mean, I'm sure becoming a D1 athlete was a great accomplishment for you, right? But if that's the vision, now there's no more vision left. So now you now what, right? So if you have a more longer term vision, uh, what you want to do. So, so one of my visions is to uplift, inspire and be the light to the world. And so, you know, I, I could accomplish that in a lot of different ways. And it's in and, and I, I'm going to continue to accomplish that for forever and ever and ever. Right. So uh, but I'm curious for you. You know, you know what you know can you can you expand a little bit on your vision specifically do you have something that's core value vision that really uh drives you um and if you if you would be able to share that yeah you know today in the world of business <clears throat> there's really three things that i take into consideration when i take on a new business a new opportunity and want to strive for something it's you know a does this impact you know i want to do things that are impactful am i impacting people on a daily basis and really making a difference that's number one. Number two, do I actually enjoy doing it? You know, do I like what I have to do? Do I like the the macro environment of it? Of course, you're not going to always like the micro. I don't like sending out cold DMs. I don't like sending out cold messaging. I don't like dealing with systems and operations on a daily basis. 
no, yeah, there's interesting. And I like the strategy side of that, but on a daily basis, I don't like the micro side of it necessarily, but I like the macro of what I'm doing. And because of that, I enjoy it. And number three, is it profitable? Can I make revenue from it? And if it checks all those three boxes, then it's something that I have an interest in potentially pursuing. It's great stuff. Yeah. I love what you said. I love the micro and macro uh, you know, piece of it you talked about, which is, which is so cool. Cause I think there's a lot of times you know, I, I think the generation of today, the younger 20 somethings, they want to come come out you know, college, you know, guns blazing and they want to change the world. And and then when they find out that, you know, the job that they have is not necessarily going to do that, they get this illusion. Um, but as long as you're, you're there's there's something that's overall arching and, and, and driving you like for me, you know, whether I, whether I'm making money, that the, the areas I make money, they don't always have to be totally directed to that goal, the money I'm making could be directing to that goal, if you know what I mean, right? You, let's say one of your one of your visions is to be able to, feed, you know, uh, you know, help with world hunger, right? The, you could either do one of two things. Either you can go and be a missionary and go ahead and be, go out to the to the third world countries that have those challenges and, and do that. Or you could put a put, a, you know, put money together, donate a lot for that. Or you could start a, a, a charity or fund to, to be able to support that there's a lot of ways you could do it it doesn't have to be it's not just doing you know you know just as long as what you're doing is ultimately in your big the big picture of your life is ultimately feeding that particular vision i think you'll be okay definitely yeah for sure all right well good stuff well so now we want to move into another category uh in your in your bio there was something mentioned about impossible possible so if if our community our amazing community if you guys are ready I'd like you to type in the word hashtag possible, hashtag possible. And uh, we're going to now ask the next question for our amazing Aaron, uh, this next question, which is how did you cultivate the mindset of impossible? The impossible is possible. You know, it's, it's just anything is possible. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. You know, most people think they can't do something or they can't achieve something because of you know, what they were brought up to believe or, or what society thinks of them or what their limitations are. And that's just not true. If you have a, you know, goal or, or something that you want to accomplish, you can accomplish it. It's plain and simple. Are, are you willing to put in the time and the effort and the energy into it to accomplish it? You know, most, most of the time, the reason people don't get to their goals is because they simply don't put in the time, effort and energy into it. And most people don't want to hear that. And most people are going to get pissed off by me saying that. But to be honest, if you don't accomplish your goal, it's no one else's fault. It's your own fault. You haven't put in the time, the effort, and the energy. The only reason certain businesses of mine aren't where they need to be is because I haven't put the time, effort, and energy yet into it. And they will get there eventually. The only reason that you know someone out there who you know thinks that they want to start a business and haven't it haven't yet, it's because they haven't put the time, effort, and energy. The reason that you know your relationship isn't working out, you haven't put the time, effort, and energy into it. It's 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 never anyone else's fault. It's your own fault. And when you think of it that way you can make anything that you think is impossible possible. I, I love that. And, and I think w what, what drives that maybe what drives that inactivity for a lot of people, Aaron, is the mindset of, I'm not so sure it's possible. So there's the, I think there's a mental barrier that a lot of people go through. And, and um, what I, what I've learned and I've heard it's a, it, to me, it's almost one of those uh, positive mental attitude cliches you hear self-development cliches, but, if you think you can, if you think you can't, you're right, right? So whatever you think, you believe, and you're going to, you know, work in, and move in that direction, right? So if you're thinking it's possible, it's going to be possible. If you think it's impossible, yeah, it's going to be impossible, right? Because your mind will go in, in the direction of its most dominant thought, right? So my, my belief, my belief system believes, you know, and, you know, all things are possible for those who believe, right? There's some, there's some, you know, scriptural, you know, things, you know, not to get religious or anything, but there's, it's all it's all there. But it's it's a universal law. Is you know again, we got to be a little realistic here, right? I, I'm not going to say I believe I'm a tree, and all of a sudden I'm going to be a tree. Okay, that's a little ridiculous. But but basically, in terms of accomplishments, okay, it looks like uh, Cameron's queuing up a, a graphic for this uh, conversation here. Um, but yeah, there he is. There he goes. Thanks, thanks, Cameron. Yep, there it is. Whether you think you can, you can. When you think you can, you're right. Yeah, exactly right. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it's true. And so you, you just got to really believe. And and uh, a lot of it comes to belief. And and how do you believe? We've talked about this on our show. 
many times you got to program your brain. You program your brain through through your words, through visuals, right? Uh, through through self self affirmations and 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 meditation. Meditation is a big one for me as well. So very cool. Any other uh, co comments or thoughts on on the impossible versus possible? No, you know you're you're completely right there. It's you know. You know, if, if you set your mind to believe that you can do something, then you can do it. And, and I'm a strong believer in that. Absolutely. And I'll say this because I think this is really important, too, for anybody that's getting started in something. And, you know, they have this big goal. Uh, Tatiana was talking about uh, starting a nonprofit that was going to serve all people around the globe. I said, we got to talk because I have a very similar uh, kind of goal in terms of, uh, helping people get access to education and opportunity all over the world. And so that's a big, hairy, impossible uh, sounding kind of goal. But whether it's something along those lines or being an athlete, you know, I have kids. And so, you know, they're, they're sitting there and they're saying, you know, dribbling this and doing that at that speed is impossible. And then they practice a few times and they're like, oh, my goodness, I did it. And I think that's really important to remember for all of us that it starts with those small steps. You know, if, yeah. if we say uh, we can lift, you know, a thousand pounds when we've never lifted 500, right? We're, we're setting ourselves up to fail and that, that can set up a negative consequence, a negative outcome. Whereas if we say the goal is for me to lift X more pounds than I did yesterday, suddenly I'm getting there and I'm working on my push-ups, uh, Steve. I'm working on it. <laughs> Absolutely. It's good stuff. Absolutely. Um, so we, we want to move to the next category here, the next question here. And, and so I, 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 uh, I want to talk about, I love this topic. I love the word grit. And I, I believe that word grit came out more recently. I don't know if it's a word that's been around for years and years and years, but it feels like it's a word that just got invented. So, so I'm going to talk about this, but if you're ready for the next question, type in hashtag grit. Uh, our amazing community. We, we love and appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for your participation. We don't want you just sitting and being lurkers. We want you involved. So if you're, if you haven't yet done anything, because I know sometimes, uh, you know, when you're on LinkedIn and broadcast, it's easy to just sit and watch, but, and sometimes I know my, my mom who's, you know, keep her in your prayers and thoughts because she's, she's in uh she's just getting out of a hospital, but she's a great supporter. But my mom would say, Steve, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to contribute now. And, and so just, the, we're making it easy for you, right? To hashtag grit. Right? Yeah, yeah we, got some, so we got some people jumping in. So Martin Casper has been um, putting some great comments in the chat. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Just begin there and keep go. moving. Uh, we got Luis Alberto Luigi Gardenez in there with grit. Tatiana talking about grit. Martin Casper talking about grit. We appreciate you. Corey Mitchell jumping in here. Powerful. Corey the man. Mindset. Yes, indeed. So keep, keep the comments going and make sure you're connecting with each other. Keep 100 going. Yeah, exactly. Get in the comments, connect with each other. It's so important uh, to, to our community to connect with each other. So the question on grit is, what does grit and determination mean to you, Aaron? Yeah, you know, it's it's boils down to being able to put in the you know work that needs to be done. You know, if you're determined to accomplish your goal, you know, how far are you willing to go to get there? You know, are you willing to work at the hours that you don't want to work? Are you willing to do the things you don't want to do? Are you willing to ask for help when you don't want to ask for help? Are you willing to, you know, forego doing something you want to do for something that you need to do? You know, that's, that's what determination is, you know, how, how far are you willing to go to achieve your goals? You know, so many people say, I want to make a million dollars, but then they don't, their actions don't reflect what it takes to make a million dollars or some people say, I want to create a side business that can eventually take over my nine to five. But then their actions don't reflect, you know, what it takes to create a business on the side. Like it's, it's, that's what determination is, is, is do your actions meet your thoughts and, and are you willing to do whatever it takes, no matter the circumstances? Absolutely. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. I love that. I have a couple of things that I, that I was been, been thinking about on this topic a lot. Right. So, and I didn't make some of the stuff up. I heard this stuff recently and it really resonated for me. And that is, you know, number one, I think a lot of times when people are going through and they're looking to, you know, create some, some kind of significant something, whether it be a, 
like you said, a, an accomplishment, like becoming a D1 athlete or whether it be an invention or whether it be a business they're creating, or whatever. A lot of the excuses you hear a lot of times is about time. You know, I don't have the time, right? And, and everyone speaks on time management, but I heard the phrase priority management. And I like that a lot. You know, the ability of just prioritizing. If you know this is super important to you, then prioritize it, right? You can't do everything. You could do, you could do, you can only do, and you know, and, and, and by the way, we find time for the things that are most important to us, right? We, we make time for things that are important to us, right? So um, I heard this, grind, but don't whine. I love that, you know, little little rhyme action, but you got to grind. You got to gotta put in the work. You got to grind. Uh, I heard this, either a pretender or a contender, right? Do you, you know, are you are you out there? Are you, you know, putting in the work? You're doing, are you, just, you, you get in, you're, are you out there, you know, grinding it out, right? So thank you, Cameron. Cameron, I love that. Cameron's uh, putting the quotes out there. Uh, I heard this, and this to me was the, the definition of grit, you know, not to, you know, to, to overstep what you said, Aaron, which you said is 100%, but grit equals passion plus persistence. That's what I heard that grit is. And I, and I love that, right? Um, and, and the last thing I'll say is, and I heard this also recently, and again, it's about accomplishment. It's about, you know, becoming the best version of you. And, and, that, and that is this. The definition of hell is when you finally meet the person you could have become. That's deep. Definition of hell is when you finally meet the person you could have become. So I don't think you want that, right? So make sure that you're out there gritting and, you know, grit, you're putting the grit in, grinding, uh, and, and, and you'll have the glory, the grit, the grind, and the glory. So, but uh, anyway, we're ready, we're ready for the, the next question here. Uh, uh, it, uh, amazing community, uh, if you're ready, uh, and we're starting to get towards the bottom of this half hour. So uh, we're going to bring this home soon, but uh, so so if you're ready, just type in the word do, D-O. If you're ready, hashtag D-O. And so here's the question, right? When you, so Aaron, when you, things get tough for you, and we know they always will for everybody, what are some things that you do? It's focusing on your why. You know, why are you doing something? If, if it gets tough, but you're focused on, like we said before, the macro goal, and you're focused on what you actually want and how you're impacting others and how you're creating something, you know, long lasting and a legacy for yourself, then it doesn't, it shouldn't matter if it gets tough. Like that, that shouldn't even be a thought in your mind. You should be able to put it away. You can, you can go take a walk, go meditate, go work out, go do whatever, but focus on what your long-term goals are. The issue that most people have is the second it gets tough, they quit, they give up, they don't keep trying. They don't keep putting in that, that effort that they need to, to accomplish their goal. And then they blame others. They blame their circumstances. They blame something that, you know, they, they couldn't, you know, could control. And that's just the wrong way to think about it. But, you know, it's when times get tough, it's, it's focused on your why. Why are you doing something? If you truly want to do it and you truly are still, you know, impacted by that why, then fight through it and it'll be fine. If, you know, something gets tough and you truly don't have a passion or interest for it anymore, then okay, it's okay to pivot. It's okay to find a new business. To go, it's okay to find a new opportunity. But it's, it's looking at that why and, and, and what's causing you to continue to do it. It's great stuff. Yeah. Focus on the why, right? A great book, Simon Sinek, Start With Why. Uh, you know, we know that it, it's it's the one thing that really drives us, right? Uh, we don't we don't get driven by the what or the how. We get driven by the why, for sure. Uh, so it, it's it's pretty amazing. So, well, good stuff. Well, this this is this has been great. Um, we we want to have I'm going to give you an opportunity, Aaron, to, uh, to to give us some closing comments, anything specifically you want to share with the audience. And before we do that, we want to challenge our viewers one more time. Uh, if you're ready, just type in the word close, uh, hashtag close, CL, not close with a H, a T-H, but a close, L C L O S E. I'm not the big speller. I'm the, the, I'm the, the, uh, the dyslexic guy. So, uh, we're going to have you, you know, close us out here, Aaron, if there's any final comments or thoughts, you know, maybe yeah. the best way that people can reach you and, and uh, anything that you want to share with our community and uh, yeah. definitely make sure to connect with Aaron for sure. Yeah. I appreciate you having me. Like we talked about, you know, the impossible is possible. If you have a goal, if you have a dream, if you have something you want to accomplish, you can find a way to make it happen. You know, my website's AaronGolub.com. My email is Aaron AaronGolub.com. You can find me on you know Instagram and Twitter at Aaron J. Golub or, you know, LinkedIn at Aaron Golub. Happy to, you know, connect it and please feel free to reach out to me. That's great. Awesome stuff. So, 
Yeah, so so good, good, great, great uh, having you on with us, uh, Aaron. This has been great. Hopefully, uh, the you know the, the our viewers, our community are are inspired to to go out and do something big in their life and not let the circumstances, the the, the hand that they were dealt, the crappy hand they were dealt, if you will, you know, influence them, but in fact, give them the ability to want to press forward because you know what, you know, your mess becomes your message. Your, your, you know, your, your, you know, the, the challenges, right? Your test, the test that you're going through becomes your testimony. You know, again, those are kind of cliche words and phrases too, but it's true, right? So we all go through our stuff, right? I love the fact that I could share now that I've been, that, you know, I was, I went from shy and introverted and bullied and picked on and all the things I've gone to now they call me the master connector, right? It's pretty awesome. Um, and I, I still have a lot, a long way to go, but it's amazing how you can inspire people and, and just be that excuse remover right and i love what you've done with you and, and are doing with your life to inspire people because you know we all we all need that so we're, we're gonna close things down cameron i don't know if you're backstage there or coming back on but we're 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 amazing to have uh you know listen i i appreciate you cameron you have no idea this i know you've got you know with your catering business you know event staff and catering business you I'm I'm just blessed that you're even here, and I appreciate all that you do, sir. Making <laughs> oh, the putting the magic behind uh, all this show, and and uh, I don't know if you have any closing words, sir. But we're, we're about ready to. Well, kind I of wanted wrap. I wanted to thank our sponsors, and I wanted to bring up the fact that we have one of our sponsors coming up next week. So if you like what we do, um, and one of the things that's kind of cool, I think, about us is that we would not partner with anybody. Right. that we didn't believe in. And so we've partnered with two people, Jordan Mendoza with Blaze Your Own Trail is one. But we have Wes uh, Lumos coming on the show next week, July 13th. Uh, we're going to be putting out some videos talking about our experience with this product. And it's one of those things that has actually helped our ability to connect with more people, with it, which is what this show is all about. It's about the follow-up. It's about the follow through. It's about connecting with people. It's about taking charge of your life so that you can get to that goal line, right? And I think, you know, what we were talking about today was so important because you got to know your goal. You got to know where the finish line is. Even if you continue to move that, you got to have a direction to run. And so uh, our partners have helped us uh, get a little bit closer to our respective finish lines. And we're very appreciative for that. So tune in next week, uh, episode 71, West Limo, same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, but we're going to close it out today with Crush It. You guys know what to do. You know how to get into the comments and say Crush It. I'm going to slide it over to my man, Steve Spiro, so he can set us all up for crushing this week. absolutely and and listen uh, like yeah like cameron said right we it's our responsibility it's our show's mission to be the light uplift inspire and encourage and uh you know if, if you're not spreading the word if you're not getting out there and connecting with people and and being that light, there's no nobody's right you're 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 basically a light inside a big cardboard box where the only person that sees that that light is inside the box and there's nobody in that box right so let's get out there let's be the light to the world Get out there, connect. Obviously, hopefully you're connecting with the people that are that have been in the comments. Hopefully you're connecting with Aaron. And just get out there and connect. And, and don't, don't miss next week's show. Next week's show, the topic is called, you know, the ultimate sales connector. Don't get hung up on the word sales. It's kind of a pun because Wes is con – uh, We're all in sales, guys. We're selling we ourselves That's every true. day. Yeah. But it, but sales connector is the name of his company. But ultimate sales connector is the name of, the, of this next episode coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're excited to have have uh, you on with us and have have Wes uh, here with us to join. So let's count down for Crush It. Ready? And everyone is going to tight. You could you could count down with us. As yeah, we're Martin, Martin knows what to do. He's already put the hashtag Crush It in there. Thank there you, Martin. You go. Martin's ready to go. So ready? Five, Five four, four, three, three two, two, one. one. Crush, Crush It! it! Have an amazing week, everybody. We will see you next week. Aaron, thank you so much for being on the show with us. If you have not connected with Aaron, it is your job. It is your mission to do so uh, after watching the show. If you're watching the show on the replay, make sure you get in there. Hashtag replay. We appreciate you so much for showing up. Have an amazing week. We will see you next week. Steve Spiro, you're a mentor, you're a consultant, you're a business owner, but most importantly, you're a host of your own show and you're also a master connector.
Steve Spiro is one of my idols and I love listening to everything that he does. He's such a dynamic individual. Some of the topics I really enjoy speaking on is how to really connect, you know, whether it be in person or through social media. I love to lead with my weaknesses. I lead with, you know, my vulnerabilities. It's fine because I'm okay with who I am. Number two is how to go from being inward focused, self-focused into others focused. Being willing to give and, and go out there and, and, and look to serve, that will attract the right things. Another one is on leveraging LinkedIn to really grow your business. You can reach a lot more people. You can broadcast a message to people that actually consented to want to know you. And then lastly, overcoming big obstacles. I love sharing. I was a shy, jabroid kid, picked on, bullied, learning disabled, dyslexic, really in a dark place. I was really in a box in the shell. And I've been able to break out of that box. And, and so I love being able to inspire people and really help them. So the Master Connector was born. The world is my networking event, right? I meet people all the time. My goal is to meet three strangers every single day. Steve is open to meeting you. You should set up a face-to-face -face with Steve. One little conversation can really change your life.